What's the difference between massage and FDM? The two terms are hardly comparable. A massage is defined by the manual approach, that there are special techniques performed with the hands, and this is what makes massage therapy a massage therapy. Uh, in certain massage therapies, there are certain philosophical medical concepts behind it. They are in some cases more, in some cases less elaborate. So uh, let's say in sport massage, for example, you do a certain array of maneuvers, of techniques that maybe amplify the blood circulation or, I don't know, might reduce, the goal is to reduce the tension of the muscle or to, to remove uh, lactate and other results of metabolism uh, from the muscle tissue and the science behind it, uh, I hope I don't offend anyone, but is rather minor. They are traditional approaches. So there is maybe some scientific knowledge about the metabolism of the muscle, but the te manual techniques mainly remained unchanged changed for the last century. So the scientific uh, input doesn't really influence the techniques. So in other massage techniques, there are more, I would say, uh, uh, geographical, ethnological backgrounds like from Hawaii or, or they are from, from, I don't know, China or other places in the world. So their local medical concepts stand behind it. Uh, <clears throat> but in general, it is defined, massage therapy is defined as a manual approach uh, with my, minor force, yeah, is a common approach in massage. And in, uh, with various backgrounds, medically concepts, medical concepts, philosophical concepts. Um, the fascial distortion model, which is abbreviated with FDM, uh, can hardly be compared with that because it is a model, it's a concept. It's a way to see discomfort, a way to see pain, uh, palsy, weakness, instability. Many of these complaints uh, are very common and are not seen as what they are. They are seen as medical diagnosis. So if you, maybe you say, uh, somebody complains about pain, a physician might call it inflammation because this is the medical concept behind pain. But the patient does not suffer from inflammation. They suffer from pain. Or nobody suffers from arthrosis they suffer from knee pain or back pain. And the fascial distortion model has a very unique way to see these complaints and interpret them, which, are, which differ from the medical concept as well as from many massage therapist concepts. And it's very unique and uh, only used in the, within the fascial distortion model. And these are the six fascial distortions. So, uh, very specific alterations of the fascial shape, of the shape of the human fascia, are the origin of the discomfort, of the pain, of the complaint. And once this step is made and we consider this pain being a result of a distorted fascia, we are doomed to design special treatments to rearrange the shape of the fascia. And they might be manual techniques, they might be uh, exercises, they might be special tools required to restore the shape. Uh, maybe in the future there will be surgical procedures, maybe in the future there will be drugs amplifying these results or maybe replacing manual therapy. And the fascial distortion model is open to all these techniques, to all these uh, uh, approaches, as long as the, the complaint of the patient is envisioned as a fascial distortion. So a massage is not FDM and FDM is not a massage. 
As I said, these two terms are not comparable. They are not the same categorization. So a massage therapist, uh, considering the human fascia being distorted, might use massage techniques to restore the shape once he is familiar with the fascial distortion model. Then these two approaches will blend into, into each other because massage techniques are used to restore the fascial shape, to, uh, let's say, fix fascial distortions. Uh, this approach is not very common so far because of the mainly a legal aspect that the forces required uh, require to restore this shape are in some cases higher than the average massage therapist would apply. And by repeating a soft technique 100 times, it is unlikely that it will help to change to the, real, to the original shape. And we will see what the future brings. Uh, it's hard to exclude the massage therapists on the long run, but so far it is mainly a legal aspect about bruising and applying uh, higher forces uh, or applying manipulation techniques is uh, which might other people consider as dangerous and not suitable for a massage therapist. Um, these were the obstacles so far. I think on the long run, the manual skills, the palpation skills, the uh, experience in applying forces to other humans and to feel very, very subtle differences between the tissue uh, in different areas of the body or in, in the individuals, these are all capabilities that massage therapists bring into the profession or gain in their profession. But um, so I would be very sad if they would be excluded on the long run. But so far uh, it was mainly physicians, physiotherapists, professions with a, I would say, stronger legal background. Yeah, that um, are involved in the fascial distortion model. So if this happens, that massage therapists can learn FDM, then the thing they have to change compared to what they've done till now is not their hands, is not their techniques, but mainly how they think and when they apply their techniques, right? Yes. Um, the the main issue in the fascia distortion model is mentally. It is a mental approach that uh, what we envision being the source of discomfort, pain, complaint, whatsoever, weakness, or whatever the patient complains of. Um, in the medical field, uh, coming from a medical university, for example, there are very specific medical diagnoses which are mistaken by many physicians with the complaints of the patient. So if they suffer, let's say, from a pain running from the lower back down to the leg, physicians in general consider an impinged nerve as being the problem. So they say you suffer from an impinged nerve, but nobody suffers from an impinged nerve. They suffer from a pain from the lower back running to the leg. And the impinged nerve is the medical interpretation of this. This is a very crucial point to distinguish. Once you mistake the complaint with the envisioned diagnose or concept behind it, you're doomed to apply specific treatment. So it does not make any sense in the medical field to treat the leg. You have to treat the spine for whatever reason. The patients don't hurt at the spine, but they are all, their treatment goes to the spine. So this, I don't say that's wrong. But you lose a lot of chances by this, let's say, uh, prejudice that you say you suffer from an impinged nerve. And many of the medical diagnoses 
don't really offer the option of a treatment. So they are doomed to, let's say, raise depression, primarily in the patient's mind, but on the long run, also in the therapist's mind. If all your patients suffer from arthrosis and you can't change arthrosis because there is not a joint replacement for any joint in the body, you cannot replace all the joints with artificial joints and there is no drug and there is no specific treatment available. So you can only, let's say, ameliorate or let's say, um, uh, support the patient with some uh, comforting treatments. So I think this is very depressive because it's, it's a, the arthrosis concept uh, is based on a natural progression of it. So once you suffer from a minor stadium of arthrosis, you will be in a more severe stadium in a few years. So the, you're doomed to be depressed. And if all your patients are depressed, you will be depressed as well as a therapist or as a physician. So the fascial distortion model, uh, as far as my experience is concerned, gives a total different option because I don't say arthrosis is wrong and the fascial distortion is the correct diagnosis and has to replace the arthrosis, but it gives a lot more options. You can do a lot of things for the patient and they will get better in many cases. If you don't achieve this goal, maybe you have to improve your techniques, but you, did, you don't harm these people. But if you just don't do it, you can't help. And the fascial distortions as uh, a concept behind the discomfort, behind the complaints, offer completely entirely new treatment approaches by untwisting fibers that you presume to be twisted in the wrong pattern, eh, you can get relief of this pain. And you cannot do this as long as you believe in inflammation. I don't say inflammation is wrong, but it leaves very limited options. You can take anti-inflammatory drugs. The majority of patient, patients that come to me and they suffer, they've already had all these drugs. That's that's not an option for them. They had these drugs. And as long as they take these drugs, they have less pain, but they're not perfect. And on the long run, they understand that they can't take these drugs the rest of their lives. It would harm their, their health. And so the, let's say the inflammation theory, the arthrosis theory, they all have limited options. And the fascia distortion model brings new ideas and new treatment approaches, which I think is very um, favorable. The massage therapist who learns this uh, might be frustrated in the beginning because the massage is only suitable for some of the fascial distortions. Some others would probably require manipulation or traction or uh, uh, in general forces applied which are unusually applied by massage therapists. But some of the fascial distortions maybe are their home ground and they treat already these fascial distortions all day but just not envisioning fascial distortions behind it. So I think there will be a special in the future there maybe will a, a occur a specialization and some of the fascial distortions will be treated by massage therapists, some others maybe by surgeons, some others by physiotherapists. This would be an ideal situation for me, uh, but this is not as it is in the present.